Yeah, well, uh, last year we passed uh, a Rhodes Bill to increase the funding uh, for the state of South Carolina's highway system. Uh, it had been crumbling, it hadn't been done in about 30 some odd years. Uh, we needed to do something to fix it. Uh, we did that, and there's, as you know, riding around, there's a lot of orange cones out there. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of construction going on, a lot of bridge work going on, uh, different parts of the state. Had a lot of questions from constituents and folks, hey, where's my money going? What roads are coming up? How's this thing, you know, how's it working? You know, it's um, and the, the misconception of, you know, a shovel and two people leaning up against it. So the thing is to get uh, Secretary Hall, we're trying to, been working uh, for months to try to get her just to come to Anderson, do some town halls. She was willing to, and still is to do them all across the state. Uh, and she's done several across the state, but none really in Anderson to bring her here and say, hey, we got a lot of interstate in Anderson County. And we've been paving a lot of it going north, as you can tell. Um, we've got a lot of bridges, hoping to widen. I think one of the future projects is to widen from exit 19 to the Georgia line. So, I mean, there's a lot of things in future uh, needs for Anderson County. There's current needs that's going on, increased funding for C funds. So just have her come up and explain, this is, you know, what we're doing at the DOT. This is how we uh, rate our road projects. These are the things that are happening. This is where your money's going. This is the future plan for your dollars. Um, this and basically we're going to have an interactive portion uh, that you'll see about the website, you know, how to go to scdot.org and, and look at the, the trust fund. That new two cents is going into a trust fund and it's updated on the website so you know how much is in it, you know where it's going, you know where the roads are going. You can virtually look at the roads. Uh, you can go in and hit like a viewfinder and, and go right down to the actual road projects and see stuff going on. So there's a lot of different things that we've done. We're just trying to get the message out there. Uh, been a lot of misinformation out there in the hinderlands of uh, the internet world, whether it's on Facebook or what have you, bloggers. And, but just to try to have the opportunity for people to say, look, here's the Secretary of Transportation, here's the staff, ask your questions. I'm gonna ask her this question too, but I, is, the distribution and figuring that out a pretty difficult thing because I mean for uh, traditionally in years gone by I'm not saying now the coast got everything well so, a lot of sort of and, and basically a lot of it's uh, and the coast did get a lot of it uh, we got some too but not as much but when you don't have anything to give out other than federal money because you got federal match there's nothing for state uh, then you have to go where a lot of the federal roads are and a lot of it's based upon congestion. Well, there's more congestion on the coast because, I mean, Horry County and Beaufort County and Charleston uh, have been exploded in population, more so than Anderson has been. So, I mean, she can answer those things, but, but that's kind of how it was looked at. Well, you know, we basically had a finite amount of money. And we always try to get the most we could out of the federal match. And then that money's obviously dictated by the federal guidelines. So that's kind of what what happened. So the state secondary roads basically didn't have a whole lot of money to go on them other than CTC funds. And now we do have a pool at least. And now we have a pool for construction, we have a pool for safety upgrades, we have a pool for CTC. It just seems if you look at 85, particularly from Anderson to Greenville, it's just too narrow. You know, with the trucks and... And you know, and the people in the, people in, uh, the low, low state complain that 85's getting most of the money now. Well, 85's got more traffic than those other interstates. So back once again to the traffic volume. It's more volume on the, on the interstates up here than it is in the low country, but low country had congestion problems. Why do you think it is people have trouble getting excited about roads, spending money on roads? They don't, they seem to get upset about spending money on roads, but they, everybody, everybody drives. You know, I think it's like your roof, you know, it's, it's to that point, it's above you. It, as long as the water's not pouring in on your head, it's fine. But as soon as the water starts coming in, you have a problem, just like a pothole, just like saying, you know, now we got a problem, now you got to do it. Well, you know, did you save for it? Did you, you know, and you got to, it's a, and if you had a hail storm, then the insurance company didn't pay enough because they depreciated it. So there's a, you know, it's kind of one of those, con just construction in general, I think. It's, it's, uh, and then, Lord, when it does start, now, getting complaints of, well, I've been sitting in traffic for an hour, you know, I can't go anywhere. So it's, you know, it, you know, is that a good problem to have? I think so, because eventually it'll be uh, better off uh, with these widened projects. And that's something that I think I hope Secretary touches on is, is something that, you know, unfortunately we, we worked on, on the bill for several years, I did, and, and knowing how long a project takes, you know, is something I think that folks don't realize that, 
if you, the quickest thing you do is resurface it. You know, if you start widening a road, depends on whether it's a federal road or not, it can take years to go through permitting processes, especially if you've got lakes involved and you got to get the core involved. It, it, it could take some time for there. You, know, you talk about it, but there's no action. And I think that's people, you know, see and believe in, and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, I can see it happening now, but what took so long? Well, we had to go through all these permitting processes. Even though it's a state agency, you still have to go through the permitting. Why is it important to have these kind of face-to-face -face meetings, Brian? I mean, I think that these are the people that's in charge. And uh, when they come to your community, it's really important. And, you know, she's a busy lady. Uh, love her to death. Uh, I, I don't think the, the legislation would have passed without her. I really don't. Um, Secretary Hall was our engineer over this area, in the S. Anderson area, uh, for a number of years. She was at the Greenville office. Then uh, whenever they had their financial problems um, underneath uh, Secretary Ange, uh, they brought her down to Columbia to be in finance. So she's been a district engineer, she's been over finance, she's an engineer by trade, then she was over engineering, and then they hired her as uh, the temporary uh, secretary, and then they made her the permanent secretary, which was by far the best move that, that has happened at the DOT in a long time. Um, morale's up, um, she's very conservative, she, she, she knows. She's, she's been that field person, she, she's an engineer, she's been in the finance office, so it's kind of hard to, to, to bluff her. And she seems to remarkably have broad support among everybody. Is this is the one office you don't hear very many people? Straight shooter, and that's, that's what I like about her. It's the way I try to be, and she's the same way. We just shoot straight and be done with it.